Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Right, today what we've got here is a um, 5EB R6 engine. Now, these suffer with cylinder liners cracking, uh, as we all well know. Now, uh, with this one, I had a rather unsuccessful, apparently this is a good engine, and from what I've felt so far, it is. But I want to double check because I'm selling this and I'm asking top money for it. So, you know, it's a fairly low mileage engine. So I'm hoping it's good, but I want to guarantee it. So what we're going to be doing is we're removing the head, taking pictures of the cylinder liners if they are all good, and then refitting it all back up with a new head gasket. We won't be doing the refit in this video. I'm going to try and keep the video fairly short. I'm going to you know, because my lack of editing skills means that basically doing this type of video it can sort of go on a bit. So I've already removed most of the bolts from the rocker cover and the side panel, which are the first two things we're going to be taking off. So it just saves a little bit of time. Um, basically, when the engine was in the bike and running, all I did um, was when running the engine, take the oil cap off and you get a little bit of puff puff out of here but if you put your hand against it you can feel it it kind of pushes against your hand but not like excessively it's like it pushes against your hand and then like the second you actually make a seal with it it stops like you shouldn't feel any pressure against your hand once your hand is over it that's that's basically how it should be and and this is like that so i'm hoping i'm hoping that the engine is good I'll be very upset if it's not, pretty much. Um, and you'll be seeing the cylinder liners along with me, so this should be quite fun. So basically, it's just how to guide and how to remove the cylinder head. Obviously the engine's on the bench, you wouldn't want to do this in the bike frame itself. You could do it, but it'd just be an absolute nightmare and there's just no point. Um, for the sake of undoing a few bolts until an engine drops out, you might as well do that. Um, obviously put something underneath it before you do undo the final mounting bolts, don't literally uh, drop out. Uh, another easy way of doing it is if you've got both wheels off, um, take the bike off the stands with the engine supported by blocks of wood or whatever, undo the bolts and then pull the frame and bike off of the engine. Uh, that's quite a good way of doing it especially if you're on your own. So, get straight into it. Want to find my Allen key wrench. There it is, over there. I'm gonna check you're still in, good view. Yeah, right. So basically, like I said, I've removed all these bolts, apart from the final, final one. So, we wanna do that. This will be stuck on with a bit of a seal. You might need to give it a bit of a tap, bit of a pry. You want to try and not pry on it because it's a rubber gasket. So, you know, you don't want to be damaging that, especially if you want to try and reuse it. This one isn't leaking at all, so we are going to try and reuse it. Might need a bit of a gentle persuasion with the rubber mallet. There we go, just breaks free. Set that aside, not upside down, because these tend to fall out and you forget where they are. So find somewhere clean for that to go. Next you want to be removing this cover. You can get to the crank pulley bolt through just this, but doing this sort of job, you might as well just take off the whole thing. Again, we'll be slightly stuck. sure I'm gonna undo it anyway but I'm pretty sure that bolt in the middle is not part of this in fact I know it isn't but just to be sure Always 
watch for them and yeah so like i said it's not part of it but we'll leave it out for now anyway i have got all the bolts out there is a dowel there so this one's going to hold on with a little bit more Obviously this isn't going to get a new gasket and stuff as well, because I've just torn it. There we have a crank pulley, there's the trigger wheel for the pickup sensor. Pickup sensor stands in there, this basically controls your spark, so if you ever have no spark in your coils when there's more like this, it's gone down. So basically what we've got to do next is got to time it up. I'm going to show you where these marks are. So we can see them, I believe. Uh, yeah, we've got one here. That's one of the timing marks, and they've got to be facing away from each other. The other one is about here. You won't be able to see it in the casing. Um, but when I move it, you will be able to. And then basically you're using this point here. Where is it? There it is, where the crankcase is joined together is your mark, which you want to line up with a little T in line here. So we're nearly very nearly on time so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pause you a sec and i'm just going to reposition you so that you can actually see a lot better of what i'm doing and we'll go from there right here we go that should be just about you sorted right fine 12 mil now we've got a little timing mark here it's marked t for timing like i say lines up this crankcase join and then you've got mark here and here so if we turn this over a little bit i've already taken the spark plugs out like i said bore scoped it the other day so there's that timing mark there all right so what we want to do is turn it around just for the sake of the video um basically for every two turns of these sorry for every one turn of these is two turns for the crank so if you find that your T, I've just gone past it, shouldn't really wind them back either, but because I'm taking it off, it's, it's all right. If you find, line this T up with the crank part and you find that these are actually pointing at each other, you might think that's right, but that's actually wrong. The uh, centre pistons are at TDC when that's the case. That's not actually how it should be. So if you go around again, find that T mark again, and line it up on the bottom here. Just like that. You then have these marks on the outside. And you also have an I for inlet, an E for exhaust. You also have that on the cams as well. So, you know, it's, it's pretty much idiot proof. You can't really get it wrong. Um, as long as they're lined up, that is the engine set in time. That is now piston one at TDC on a fire stroke, basically. Um, well, on the compression stroke, about to do a fire stroke. Next job, what we need to do is we need to loosen this off. Now, there is a specific way of doing that, but I've always found that to remove these it's just literally a simple case of undoing it. Just keep the pressure here, undo it, slowly pull it off, make sure nothing goes twanging out. Um, if you read the manual, there is some cock and ball way of sticking a screwdriver in something somewhere and, and twisting and that holds the tension. And you, you don't need to do it, you don't. I remove that just because it kind of gets in the way. It's got up written on the top here, which one might take note of. It's fairly straightforward of what it means. It means you put that down there, basically. Cool. Ball-headed hex is so much easier to get into these things. I just worry about snapping the ball off.
nice crack loose. So I'd say keep your thumb pressure there. It's not it's not a great deal of pressure at all. To actually take the cylinder head off, you don't strictly need to time an engine. You can just pull it apart. You just need to make sure that the timing marks are set to where they need to be when you put the head back on. What I tend to do, and I'll explain this in the video when we're refitting it as well, is when refitting, I have all the timing marks. You know, normally the cams will be out and all that sort of stuff, but where the timing mark is here, I will just back it off ever so slightly so I know that all the pistons are just sat down slightly so then I can go and bolt in my cams randomly, obviously the right cams in the right place, but I can just I don't need to worry about where the position of the cam is at, while I'm bolting it down at risk of bending valves because all the pistons are out of the way and then I can time up my cams and then just basically knock this back a couple of teeth to reline it all back up because sometimes it gets in a mishmash and you know you may have timed this up but then you're going to wind this back around and it'll go clonk and stop before you know stop on an open valve before you actually get to your point so I just wind it back ever so slightly and put the cams in as and how I want and then just wind it up job done but I'll explain that again in more detail when I'm doing it in the next video there's a cam tensioner. Uh, yeah, very simple. Spring, you know, sort of oil assisted, I think. Um, but yeah, you have to reset that before it goes back in. I'll show you how to do that when it goes back in. Stay organised with your bolts. Really, you should wind them back in to wherever you can. Um, but I kind of know these like the back of my hand, so I know where what bolts go. And I've been a mechanic for a long time, so basically, now the next stage. Now we have it timed. We have the end of the the chain loose, right? Now the guides are only on guide and pins. You can just pull out, but there's no point in doing any of that yet because you can't actually get the guides out. So what we need to do is we need to undo these series of 8mm bolts uh, that lifts this top sort of cam carrier top off. Um, once that is done, the cams are then free to go. So I'm going to pause you and undo these however many bolts. All right, here we are. Got a bit of drippage, but we are survive. One thing I forgot to mention is even though you're undoing all of these things, sorry, I might need to crouch down, I don't know where I am. Um, you've got to do them in a sequence. You've got to kind of do your diagonals or, you know, your, your spiral outwards because if you just go undoing these willy-nilly, you can actually crack this or, you know, cause it some damage, warp it or anything like that. So, you know, you just got to take it easy undoing these bolts until the whole, you know, just slowly, evenly, lift the whole thing um it's a bit of a ball ache it takes it takes a while but you know you'd rather do that than break one of them because you'd be surprised at how hard something like this would be to find you know without buying a whole cylinder head so it lifts as you come so you ain't got to do no prying you just got to be do a bit of a wiggle now so i'm going to get in your way a little bit uh, but it's basically done wiggle wiggle Try and leave all the bolts in there, ideally. Makes it easier to reinstall them. Sound like American now, reinstalling. Putting it back on. There you go, that's the British way. You know, it's how a lot of them say, I've oh, taken it apart as well. Right, mate, it's taken. <laughs> anyway, put that again. So I'm going to say, nice and out of the way. And there we have a set of cams. Now, remember, they are marked E and I. E, I. Um, I 
think that is the case on the cams as well. So basically what we need to do now is just lift each one out. We can put these in our safe place as well. Now, you can drop the chain. You pull this pin out. I don't know if you see that. Yeah, pull that pin out. That releases that guide. And there's one of the guides for the chain. I'm going to put that there. This other one, I think, is just slotted in here. If I remember rightly. We've got to get it out because it's attached to the head. So, if I wiggle this chain out, there we go. I believe that is just. sort of balls on the end just fit into the head and it also fits in down here at the bottom somewhere. Very straightforward. Right now with that out of the way what we've got here is we've got the head bolts in these holes and also I need a rag and also we have the tappets and under these tappets are shims now, when you hear people saying, you know, you need your valve clearances doing this, that and the other, this is what they mean. Because if I get a magnet and lift one of these, right, what we've got underneath is a little shim. Now these are all different sizes. If you clean them off, should actually say the size on it. But yeah, this one is two zero zero. So can't be. Yeah, maybe two millimeters. Um, and they're all specific. They will be different sizes. So they'll be specific to that cylinder. So as we are only removing the head to uh, inspect. The cylinder liner condition this is a perfectly running decent engine no head gasket gone no no rattles no you know it sounded beautiful so we don't need to touch any of this we can leave it as it is so when we take the head off we're just going to carefully place it to the side so we're going to get on with that now um it's literally very nearly there got these two little five mil allen keys on the side here Just stop an oil leak. I'm very apprehensive when I have to put that much force through the long side of these T bars because with most of them now I snap the end off. They're only a cheap, uh, cheap set, but because obviously the five mil is one of the most common ones to use, and it still actually has its ball head. I'll probably not buy a new set until I snap this one off. So I'm a little bit. Uh, we've got 12 mil down in that hole now. I'm gonna have to, I might have to pause you to do this because I remember last time on this engine, I actually, well not this engine, my engine on my bike, I had to put the engine down on the floor to actually get the leverage on it to do it. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do that or not this time. I'm gonna use go, go straight from my breaker bar. have a sequence too and should be removed as per the sequence so let's just find set sequence just want to make sure I know which way it goes Pause you a sec. Alright, we're just saying crisscross pattern. Forgotten though, there are 
two more. I know, no, 10. 12, two, I'm sorry. So, basically, I'm gonna go from this side, that side, that side, that side, and work my way in. Let's hope the engine doesn't go flying. So that should be entertaining. Yeah, it's gonna go in there already. Didn't even put much force into it, it's moving around. By the way, I know I mumble and sound miserable in these videos, it's quite weird for me to talk on a video, but at the same time I want to share this content with you, so. Yeah, right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have to dump this engine down on the floor and get some levers on it, and rather ungracefully uh, get these bolts cracked off, but we're gonna do it in a sequence anyway. Um, and then once I've wound them all out, I shall pick the head, uh, pick the engine back up and uh, continue on with the video. See you in a sec. All right, that was all right. I didn't actually uh, drop it on the floor in the end. Um, I've left the last one tight just to show you exactly what I did, really. The show is not really actually that tight. In a proper breaker bar, bear in mind the engine is only supported by wood on the uh, bench here. It's a rather rickety old bench as well, so it's another reason why I've got to be careful. So basically, last bolt, in the back. Yeah, ready, off we go. Now we've just got to unwind them all. Now that they're all loose, you can unwind them willy nilly as and when you like, but or as a however you like, should we say. So we'll do just that. I'll put a little extension on there, just to help. This one stands out higher. It's higher in the head. Um, it's, a pro it's a thing I noticed when I built the engine for that one. I at first thought it was a major problem. I thought, oh shit, someone wanged that in there and bodged that right up. Um, but it's actually the the seat for the bolt is actually in the head is actually higher than all the others. I don't know why it is. It must be some oil barrier underneath or water jacket or something or other. But there must be reason for doing it. All the bolts are the same same length. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Bit of a weird one. So I've torn apart a lot of engines in my time and I've never seen anything like that. I've seen different length head bolts and all that sort of thing, but never one randomly poking up like that. But it's how it should be. So I'm just gonna whack all these off. Kind of rude. Unscrew them. Undo them. Tucking them off. That's over, I've got a cramp in my hand. Head bolts, magnet. Pull these out of here. The washers stay attached, so you don't need to worry about that. Don't lift any of the uh, tappets there. Like I've done it in here a couple of times. go and the cylinder head is ready for removal now cylinders are always a little bit stuck um, but we've got a really convenient nice little gap here as long as you don't go wrenching on it um, if it's really stuck what I use is a, just a short lever bar because you can't put much force down onto it anyway just give it a few taps and it'll start to lift there you go now this is the moment of truth you might see me 
with a rather stroppy look on my face in a minute. If I see one crack or any signs of cracking in this engine, I'm not going to be happy at all because uh, that basically makes it quite hard for me to make money on this bike if this engine is no good. So, fingers crossed, touch wood, let's hope and pray to God that it's all good. Who's with me? For the sake of the beginning of SJ motorcycles, this engine needs to be good. Come off of there. I don't know where to put it. Put it down here. gasket be very careful because these are so sharp they will lit they won't just cut you they will cut your finger off not literally but they go pretty deep pretty fast get my drift I need my torch dun 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 I'm just going to back this off slightly. Just like so. We have a perfectly Just started. Well, that's a bummer. That's a real bummer. Yeah, that's definitely a crack in that one. That's a real shame. So there won't be a refit video. Because I'm going to have to decide what to do with this engine. Well, that was a bit of a crap ending, isn't it? Mm. I say it's only just started to go. And the engine ran absolutely fine. Sounded wonderful. Um, so. Yeah, it's the very beginning of it. None of the others have got any signs. No. So that's it. Decide whether to repair or strip for bits or who knows what? It's a good one. See you soon. Bye. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Hello again, guys. Sorry. Um, kind of watched the video back and realised that I ended that rather abruptly. As you can imagine, I'm a little bit, bit pissed off already. Um, I'm all right now. I've had a little calm down and decided what I'm going to do. Uh, basically, we are going to make some money off of this engine, I've decided. Um, we are a proper garage. We are a Yamaha and Honda rebuilders. Uh, you know, we keep them alive sort of thing. So, 
rather than scrapping this engine or stripping it for bits or whatever, I'm going to look around at getting the relining done and do a full engine rebuild which also will be videos to cover and stuff like that and then I shall sell it as a complete recon engine uh, just means to say that it's not going to be any time really soon um, also watching back on the video I did notice a fundamental mistake when I was taking off the top cam carrier and saying if you crack it it's a difficult one to find on its own realizing that you can't find them on their own they are machined with the cylinder head so you know you break one of those you have to replace the entire cylinder head um so my mistake there um as soon as i watched it back to myself and i saw myself say it i thought no that's not right you idiot like so you know um so i thought correct myself there um and also another fundamental mistake is i didn't show you this crack did i I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera because it is very minute. I can only just about get my nail in it. Um, but I'm going to try and show you anyway. They always crack <coughs> in between these bits. It's basically where these are the, sorry, these are the water jacket here. And they crack in between here because the water can't obviously get there as well. Now, on this one, yeah, you can see it quite clearly there that I'll try and hold my phone and torch at the same time that there get your finger now and quite quite clearly that is quite a nice little crack started there um, all the others are fine Uh, and the other way as well. You know? So, I don't know if that's one that started there, but that's on the same cylinder anyway. No, it's more like a little... Yeah, no, that's just a mark. Um, so there we have it. Uh, basically, I'm going to get it re-sleeved. Um, all four of them um, build it back up new new valves and uh, fully cleaned um, basically a brand new engine again and that's how we're going to do it so uh, that concludes this video you won't see this engine for a while now until I've at least done all that which is going to be like I say quite a while because there's a lot more in the pipeline I wasn't expecting this to happen I was expecting to be honest it to be a good engine I'll pop another head gasket on it and um, a quick spin around to sell it on. So that's not going to happen now. I won't sell any inferior parts. So that's it. Please like, share, subscribe and um, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.